Hi guys, this is Mo Volans for AudioTouch.com and I'm actually coming to you with the first of four quick tips, two of which are going to be sampling based and two of which are going to be sort of mix based. Um, and this is the first of the two sampling based quick tips. We're in Reason here, Reason 7, and I'm going to show you sampling um, straight into Kong. Now sampling is perhaps something that a lot of Reason users sort of overlook. Um, I've seen pretty experienced Reason users not use it or not be aware of it. And obviously, if you're pretty new to Reason, it might be something you weren't aware of. Sampling's actually built right into the core of Reason's architecture, and it's really simple to use. And I find it probably the best app for sampling, and it, it takes me back to the days of hardware samplers. So how do you root it, and how do you get it set up? Well, when you load a sort of a default rack, you're going to see up here we've got a sampling input. And this is sort of within the audio I.O., and this, this here represents all the inputs um, within my audio interface. I've actually only got the first two activated. It's an Apogee Quartet, so we've got plenty of different analog and digital inputs, but I've got the first two activated. Uh, just so you know, this is done within the audio section of the preferences here. So you go to input channels and you can activate whichever ones you want. Um, currently, I've got the mic going into one. You can see my voice going in there. And I've got a hardware drum machine going into two. So you can hear me clicking that button here in the studio. And you can see some audio going in. Now, currently, uh, we've got the input one and two routed to the sampling left and right. So that's great if you're using a stereo synth or stereo drum machine. Uh, but really, in this situation, we've got a mono mic and a mono drum machine. So we're going to have to break this default routing. So I'm going to just disconnect it. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect both of these. And I'm going to um, use a spider, which is an, a sort of a stereo, uh, well, sorry, an audio merger splitter. Make sure you get the audio one, not the CV one. And I'm going to take the uh, output two, which is my drum machine, sorry, input two, and I'm going to take it into a mono input. And then I'm going to route the stereo output into the left and right sampling input. Now, what this means is, that you're not going to pick up my voice into the sampling input as we were before. And if I hit the mono drum machine, coming into input two there, it makes a stereo input. I mean, it's pseudo stereo. Obviously, you're, it's still only going to be mono, but it's just a really quick and easy way to make sure that you're getting into both of the sampling channels. Now, when you want to hear this, there's two ways you can do it. We can hit monitor, and there's our drum machine. And we can hit auto which you're not going to be able to hear right now, but when we hit the sample button, you would then be able to hear it. I'm going to leave it, go ahead and leave it here on uh, this the straight monitor mode so we can hear it all the time. We can go through the sounds. We're going to be concentrating on four sounds, so I'm going to populate the first four pads of Kong. Uh, you can also change the monitor level here. So I've just got it on the default, more or less. And we're going to go ahead and get into Kong. And sampling is as easy as hitting the sampling button. Anywhere you see this little waveform, uh, you can create sample player by sampling. You're going to see this come up, this little window. Now, don't worry too much that we've got it running. Um, you know, in older samplers, this would mean you'd have to trim it. You know, you'd have to find the beginning of the sample. Great thing about Reason, it, Reason sampling is, and let me just drag this here. I can just hit this once, press stop, and it picks it up. Now, it's going to go to the first transient. So if I hit that several times, it's going to go to the first transient. Um, but we can then go ahead and go to Edit Sample. You can see that it's created a NN Nano Sampler module automatically. And there we go. There's our sample. And I'm going to crop it. We've got start and end points here. I'm going to go ahead and crop that. And I'm going to normalize it as well. So now we can go ahead and save it. We can even name it if you like. So kick and spell it correctly. <laughs> and again, try looking at the keyboard. Always helps. Um, and there you go. There's the sound. And you can always go back in and edit this again. So say you wanted to, you know, trim the end a little bit. And maybe you wanted to put a fade on the end. Resave it. There's the original. There's a the sample. So nice mirror image just immediately. And as long as you've got good converters and you know you've got a decent audio interface, this is going to work very well. And you'll get pretty quick. You know, you can quickly select another sound, hit sample, stop go into another pad, hit sample, another sound, stop, another pad, hit sample, another sound, stop. And it's that fast. Obviously, you, it's better to go and edit these 
uh, you know, crop them, whatever, whatever you want to do, crop and put the fades in. I like to put a fade out on the end just to make sure there's no sort of noise or, you know, it doesn't cut out. And obviously there's other things you can do in here. We can reverse uh, and we've already seen normalize. We can loop as well. Um, but I find that reversing is probably better off um, done, you know, uh, right here in the sampler. You can just do it non-destructively with this reverse button. And we can edit everything else in the sampler, but that's essentially how to quickly build and populate a kit uh, using hardware or you know any sort of external source. You can sample your synths, your voice, anything you like. Uh, that easy, nice quick tip, get into it.